people ask me why Lincoln, I mean, that's, for me, that's, that's kind of a rite of passage. Matthew McConaughey says that he drove Lincolns when Lincolns weren't cool. But since I'm older than Matthew McConaughey, by about four years, I can say that I drove Lincolns when Lincolns weren't cool. I mean, my dad had Lincolns. My uncles had Lincolns. So naturally, I had to get a Lincoln. Why a 79 town car? Well, two reasons. The last Lincoln that my dad had was a 79 town car. Like the one that I have, except it was white, white top, same color red interior, except it was velour, which it was nice. Um, and I knew I wanted my Lincoln to be different. Um, when I bought mine, it was gray, dove gray, factory Lincoln color in 79. A half vinyl top that was red and red interior. And I drove it like that for about five years. And once I found that I had enough money to do what I wanted to do to it, I knew that it was three things that I wanted to do. One, getting rid of the vinyl top. I think a slick top Lincoln looks the best. And Number two, I wanted to change the color. I wanted to get rid of that gray. And to me, all Lincoln should be black. Maybe it goes back to my first job in high school, where I actually worked for a funeral home. That's a true story. But they had Cadillacs and one Buick. <laughs> Number three, I wanted suicide doors. I love the 60s Lincolns, um, but I wanted to be different. I wanted a 79, but I wanted suicide doors. Something that Lincoln should have did, or kept doing, which they, they went back to now with the new Lincolns. So, I looked and looked for somebody that could do the customization on the doors. And, uh, came across this guy, his name's Kahan, at Mad Creations, and he said, hey, he said, I can do your rear doors, I can do the suicide conversions, and I uh, checked out some of his work, so I said, okay. So he did the doors for me, um, stripped the car down, all the trim, he did the doors, got the paint done, got the uh, stainless stuff, stainless steel trim repolished um, I said about putting the interior back together uh, the only thing I had to really do with the interior because the seats were getting to where they were a little uh, worn um, I found a shop in Norcross and got rid of the vinyl seats not got rid of them got rid of the vinyl had them covered in leather put new carpet in stereo base in my trunk and I'm rolling <sighs> and in the spot Um, one other question I always get is, how did I come about getting a vehicle? And like I said before, 79 Link is what I was looking for. And I've been looking for a while on eBay, on Craigslist, other publications. And um, I had actually watched this car on Craigslist for, for quite a few months before I even went down to look at it. And um, so I finally went to look at it. It was in South Atlanta. And um, it was in the back lot of this old warehouse. And um, 
it was perfect. 66,000 miles. The price was right where I wanted it. Um, and uh, made the deal. So I'm going through the car, going through the glove box. And the interesting thing, and what I think kind of adds a little backstory to this car, is that in the glove box was a corporate insurance card, registration, and on the registration and the corporate insurance card was the Chick-fil-A Corporation, which everybody knows, you know, they were started here in Atlanta. You know, True Cathy, he's a big car guy. Um, I don't think this was in his car collection per se, even though along in the car too was a plaque with 1979 Lincoln Continental on. So that just kind of made it that much more of a, I'm not gonna say collector car, but that much more of a car with the history. So come to find out the car was just a one owner car. It was a corporate fleet car. And um, the guy that I purchased it off of was actually friends with Truett Cathy's son. And when Truett Cathy wanted to move cars out of his collection, um, this guy, he sell cars on consignment. So that's how I came about having it. Now here's the other thing. I tell people that story and it's like, man, you know, didn't, wouldn't you want to restore that car and uh, back to its former glory? Um, you know, it was a Chick-fil-A fleet car. The thing about it, it's, um, it's a 79 Lincoln Continental. And this is the last of this model. So this model, there's really nothing special about them. They're a dime a dozen. If you're looking to build an old car, you want something huge, get a Continental. Or get a Mercury Grand Marquis, which is basically the same car. And chop them up, man. <laughs> That's what my buddy's like. You gonna, you actually gonna do that to that car? You gonna change the color? You gonna suicide the door and start modding it? I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, that's all the more license to, to do it. I mean, they're only original once, and that's when they come off the showroom. Once you do anything, once you repaint it, once you do anything, they're not original anymore. So I have no problem with it. It's a cool story, and I still got the cards and the little plaque, and uh, it's a fun story to tell. But uh, she ain't Chick-fil-A no more. She's Claudine. You know, I've been asked what made me put Detroit Steel Wheels on there. And it, it, that kind of goes back to my love for the 60s Lincolns. And I would started watching the show like a lot of car guys did um, of Detroit Steel or Mob Steel. And um, when I got my car, I was really on the fence about what kind of wheels I wanted to put in it, put on it. And um, then I was like, you know what? I'm going with the Mob Steel Wheels. I've never seen, and in my opinion, or from what I've seen, and I've seen a lot of cars, um, mine is the first 70s Lincoln that had the mob steel wheels on it. Uh, the color, Woman Skag picked out the color because I was gonna go black because it's a black car. And the paint itself is is a, actually a factory Ford paint. It's, it's um, Ford Tuxedo Black, and if, if you're a Ford guy, then you know that color, and it it dances in the sunlight because um, it goes from being just black when it's dark to just all different shades of um, flake in it. And Woman Skag was like, "Yeah, no, nah, that'd be too much black. Why don't you do the interior, the color of the interior on the wheels?" So I attribute that to her eye, not mine. She had a little bit more vision than I did, but. I like it, everybody likes it. Number one question I get on my car is what year is it? It's, it's more of a um, nod to the craftsmanship in putting the doors, or making the doors suicide doors. And the question is always, is that stock? Did uh, did, did this model come with suicide doors? And that always, to me, that's the best one. 
because you know I'm at a car show, a car meet, what have you, and you see people walk in and going, you know, suicide doors, suicide doors, and then you get the older guys that walk up and they're like, that that didn't come that way, and I'm always like, nah, it didn't, and I just let them ask. So that um, to me, that's one of the best comments. I've, I've loved it. The car's been done since, um, I can't remember the year. It, it's been about five years. Um, but I'm not afraid to drive it. She's not a trailer queen. It's been to North Carolina. It's been to uh, East Georgia, down towards Florida. Um, she's, a, she's a runner. So I started out with 66,000 miles, and I'm almost at 90,000 miles now. So... Still on the original engine, original transmission, original rear end, and um, she's loving life. So Claudine is a is a roller. She's a beauty, but she's not a trailer queen. Um, why the name Claudine? Okay, well, like I said, at first, because um, her her full name is Claudine Valdez. And when I first got the car, it was gray. And the first thing I can think of is, man, this thing's battleship gray. But it wasn't a battleship, it was a cruiser. And then it's a big gas hog. And gas comes from crude oil. And crude oil is hauled by tankers. And so I originally called her the Valdez after the Exxon Valdez. And we know what happened with that. The thing dripped oil from, anyway, long story. Don't mean to get the uh, Greenpeace people. But when I painted it black, I'm like, she's not the Valdez anymore. And since it's a car built in the 70s, I had to think of a 70s black woman's name. Just harken back to a movie I saw when I was a kid. And a strong 70s black woman, that was Claudine. Um, a movie from the 70s uh, starring Diane Carroll and James Earl Jones. So that's how that name came about. The same person that asked me the question of how long it took, which I really don't want to talk about, also asked me, when did they start naming breakfasts after Continentals? And I, it, it's a joke. I mean, it, you know, you stay at a hotel, you get a free Continental breakfast. But one of my favorite lines from Cars is, if you stay overnight at the Cozy Cone, we offer a free Lincoln Continental breakfast. <laughs> ah, that tickles me. People ask me if I would ever sell it. And my favorite answer is, ain't nothing on my lot that ain't for sale. However, it had to be a pretty penny. And um, this, this car has worked a lot, which means that it's been in the presence of quite a few people with money, um, video shoots, um, music artists, producers, stuff like that, and the most I've been offered is over the 40 mark, and it didn't really move me. Um, I think maybe I, I would, but in my opinion, I, I'm not done with it. There's, there's so much that I want to do. Shop dog. There's so much that I want to do to it that I haven't done. And um, I'm not finished with it. So I, I'd like to finish it before I even consider something. Left to do. Um, it's got the original engine, original transmission. So if any of you are familiar with old cars, you're dealing with carburetors, vapor lock if you're really old school and know what that is. Um, I want to put fuel injection on it. Now let me back up. I'm going to put fuel injection on it because I like to hit the key and go. 
Um, and I want to do air ride. I, I want to really see what it looks like just laid out. Pull in somewhere, whether it's at a car meet or whatever, or I'm just out with the family. And pull into a parking space at a restaurant, air it out. That's what I want to do. Then I'm done, I think. But car projects are never done. Um, outside of the paintwork, the coach doors, Lincolns have coach doors. They don't have suicide doors. Even though it's more fun to say suicide doors, I get that. But what have I done? The first thing I did was all of the exterior lighting. I changed the incandescent bulbs out to LEDs. I just like the sharp look of the LEDs. When, when this coach light comes on and it's a bright white instead of a dull yellow, that just does it. Um, I changed the headlights to, well at first I changed them to HID lights. And if anybody knows, once you change your lights from just your standard bulb, your incandescent bulbs to HIDs, you never go back. Um, and then once the prices came down, I actually changed them to um, LED project projection lights with halos. Um, the interior lighting, I changed to LEDs. And on the rear of the Lincoln, you have this long reflector bar that's just Basically, they, uh, the two tail lights flank this long reflector bar, and it's just a dead spot on the Lincoln. So I actually pull that out and I put LED strips into that, so it lights up the center of the car at night, which I think was a nice touch. A lot of a lot of my buddies like that that are in my Lincoln Club. Um, not my Lincoln Club, our Lincoln Club. Dead gents gave you a plug. Um, stereo, gotta have my tunes. 12 inch sub in the trunk so when I'm jamming out the whole trunk rattles I love it and my brother and I we were having a conversation about that and it's, it's kind of funny it's like why, why do we still put systems in the, all of our cars that we build I said because we're still kids uh, see what I'm saying you gotta get old but you don't have to grow up 